Photographers use depth of field to bring objects in and out of focus in relationship to each other. This is something we can also do in 3D. Okay, so in order to set up depth of field, obviously you're going to need to have a scene that you want depth of field in. I have this one set up here with uh, one, two, three, four, five balls, the fifth of which being the dope ball because it's way doper than the other ones. Um, and we want to highlight the dope ball because it's so much cooler. So I'm going to go into the rendered view here by pressing Shift Z. And you'll see I've already done a few things to kind of highlight this element of my render. Um, the first of which being the just the way I have this framed. It's kind of up front. You know, your attention's drawn to it. Um, the second thing being that I have this that I have this lamp sitting over it. So that's giving it some light. But there's one more thing that we can do. There's a lot of things, but there's one more thing that I'm going to show you, which is add depth of field. And what that's going to do is make this front object of the dope ball be much clearer, and it's going to kind of blur out the ones in the back. So in order to set that up, you'll want to select your camera, which I have here. And then First thing you want to do is turn on this little checkbox right here called limits. So I'm going to click that. And what that's going to do is it's going to make a line that shows where your render is clipping. That's not really important here, but um, you can see that, you know, that, that cuts off, you know, if you don't want to render stuff that's really far away. So I'm going to ignore that. Um, but what I, what I'm really interested in is this little yellow plus sign that has appeared. So what that is, is my focal length and or sorry the focus point on the camera if you hover over that tooltip you can read that um, so that's going to help me determine you know where my focus is so i'm going to push this distance up a little bit and i'm going to push it right up to that front ball i'm going to go seven to get in my top view and i want to shine in right right in front kind of so it hits the, the front surface of it um, so that's set up, and you'll see if I zoom in, that back ball still pretty much crystal clear. And the reason for that is because we've set up our distance here, but we have not set an aperture size. So when it's at zero, it's going to be pretty much like not having depth of field on at all. It's, you know, everything's in focus. So I want to increase this. Um, I don't, it may be different on your computer, but on mine, it's super sensitive. So um, I'm holding shift here to fine tune my control. Um, you really don't want to go up too high. Um, I've found that, you know, anything past a couple inches is just overkill. Um, you know, this is obviously now super in focus, but the background has become irrelevant and I don't want that. I want to still kind of be able to see those other balls. So I'm going to bring this back down. And, um, and sometimes it works to just key something in here. So let's do, um, I'm going to do 600 thousandths. Um, okay, so that looks, that looks pretty good. And that's it. That the field is set up. You're ready to go. Uh, when you render your image, it will have this effect. Um, I will show you one other way you can set the focus. Um, you can have it focus on a particular object, and this is really useful in an animation. So if I use this little eyedropper here, I can select these different balls, and you can see now this one's in focus. So let's 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 set the one all the way in the back. I'm gonna select that, and now you can see the front ball has been blurred, and then this one a little less blurred, a little less blurred. And then it's the back ball we're focusing on. So that that's another way you can set your focus. And you can see it's moved the little, the little plus sign right there. But I want to stay focused on the front ball. And you could use this method to focus on the front dope ball, if you will. But um, it focuses on the origin point. And in this case, I don't really want to focus right in the middle of the ball here. You can see that's where my origin point is and it's it's lined up that, that yellow crosshairs with it. Um, so, so what I like to do is instead of using the focus like that is to um, just set it manually because you know in a still image it's, it's, it's really easier to just do it by hand I think. Um, 
But in an animation, you know, you don't want to be keyframing this distance every couple frames. So, um, so that is where you'd want to use this focus. So that's pretty much it. Um, with great power comes great responsibility. Don't use too much depth of field. It can really, um, I know it's a lot of fun. I don't know if you guys use Instagram, but uh, when the little tilt shift feature came out, people went freaking crazy with it. Um, don't do that. Don't use too much. Um, really, it, sh it should probably be even less than this. I'm going to bring this down. Um, people will call you out on it. It looks kind of silly when everything's just crazy blurry. It is fun to use though, so um, have yourself a blast. Make some cool stuff with it. And, um, and show me what you come up with. Uh, if you guys like the video, then click that thumbs up and click subscribe if you'd like to see the next videos I do because I do plan to do quite a few more. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.